week three in the XFL is coming in hot with the Vegas Vipers and the Seattle Sea Dragons coming at you this beautiful, well, hopefully beautiful Saturday evening at Cashman Field, fresh off a disastrous field display. Hopefully the XFL has got a little bit more together. But what we're getting into today is obviously these, or excuse me, Seattle and the Vegas Vipers coming in. Both teams are 0-2. Both teams have uh, played less than desirable football, while the Sea Dragons on paper are looking a little bit better because, you know, Ben DiNucci's June Jones-led passing attack, their rushing attack has been slightly anemic, uh, even though they did go over 100 yards. It hasn't been the most dynamic factor in their offense as well. So a couple, a couple of little fun tidbits you got. You got the game at Cashman Field. Obviously, we're all aware of that. The weather looks to be a little bit better. You know, partly cloudy skies for uh, around 62. A little bit windy. Going to be going back and forth. Apparently, per weather.com, it's going to be about about 21 miles per hour. Uh, I think this is an ugly game, guys. I do expect there to be a little bit more of a passing attack, despite the windy game. But I'm not sold that Seattle will be able to get it done. It seems like they just get up, get up, get up, and then just right when you think they're about to, about to transition to that next level, turnover. Uh, they can't finish drives. Danucci does so many things right and then has had turnovers each game. Really want to see them get Gordon involved and Jacob Pearson uh, after his first breakout game. But personally, in my opinion, I think they need to implement Montez in this new wave of two quarterback system. This is the Sea Dragons as well. Danucci's fumbling. Take the ball out of his hands on those sh- short first and ones. Do those Philadelphia Eagles push push uh push push plays and whatnot and then get the ball over the first down marker on these fourth and shorts in the goal line. Take it out of his, his hands. Montez is a big guy. You know, we talked about him in the other videos and whatnot. Uh he's got a little bit of taste uh You know, a little bit wet behind the ears, but he does have some XFL experience now. Played in week one, obviously preseason experience in the NFL. But put Danucci in in positions to succeed. Now, the running backs, uh, Brendan Knox, Morgan Ellison, look to be chopping away pretty decent at the Battle Hawks uh, defense last week. But Brendan Knox is going to be out. So Morgan Ellison seems to be the guy. So maybe that kind of prompts him to go a little bit more with with Montez, to add that extra level to the rushing game. But offensive line, you know, has been pretty decent. I think they've allowed like three or four sacks this year, if that. Uh, you know, all looking healthy. Look to be working in Colin Kelly, a CFL signing into the game. And Charlie Tanamapu is a good underneath guy at tight end. Not really going to block anyone, but definitely not a scrub at all. Now we're moving over to the defense of the Sea Dragons. You got Nico Wallace, who played way better than the stat line indicates. He only had a half sack, but the guy was constantly getting pressure. You're going to see Cesar Skipper. He's going to be constantly making plays off the edge. Sharif Miller had a good game last week, and then big P.J. Hall in the middle. Secondary, no one really, uh, no one really, you know, gets me going other than Bryce Thompson at safety. Overall, I think the defense is solid. Jim Hazlitt and Ron Zook have a decent thing going. They were able to generate a lot of pressure. And with this um, – excuse me, with this Vipers team that's had some struggles in the passing game the last six quarters, look for that to be a key factor, obviously. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of turmoil for quarterback moving over to the Vipers Viper side right now. Luis Perez is scheduled to start. He's going to make his third start this year, but – I personally think this is kind of his make or break game. Really want to see these receivers open up. You got plenty of experience on the other side. You got, excuse me, Geronimo Ellison, Jeff Bidette, Martavis Bryant, Matt Sexton. All these guys have played in either all football leagues or in the NFL. They have experience, they have stats on the stat line. And then they're running backs, the conglomerate of Rod Smith, John Lovett, DeAndre Torrey. All guys who played in either alt football or the NFL at one point. Love it, you know, was a, cu- a cut guy, but definitely on the practice squad back and forth. And Rod Smith had a good spurt with the Cowboys. Unfortunately, I think Perez is holding this team back a little bit. You know, I ranked him at originally number six going into the season. 
he bumped up to number three in week one. Week two, bumped him down to number 10. He was my worst quarterback, graded quarterback last week. It was one of five for zero yards, had one rushing attempt, nine yards. Hundley came in, threw for just under 100 yards and kind of just being thrown in there. I don't want to see the dual quarterback system this week from the Vipers. I want to see either Perez go out there and light it up, or if he can't do it, put him on the bench and then put Hundley in. Uh, looks like you know McClendon will be inactive this week. Also, the utilization of the tight ends. It seemed like they got everyone involved, uh, Dylan, Price, Koontz, and Southern. A lot going on there. Offensive line looks healthy as well. Kick it over the defense. Vic Beasley should be playing this week. Uh, injury report uh, indicates. I know Destiny Vallejo, Vallejo was recently put on the IR, or excuse me, the IR, but I feel like this defense runs runs through Mr. Harrell, another safety, kind of playing that center field, coming up in the box, making plays and whatnot. Really curious to see, see how that rolls with them. Uh I mean, the biggest problem right now is with the with, is with the uh, XFL is that we're not really getting as much transparency on injuries because you know you got Geronimo Ellison, Rod Smith, Sweeting, all these guys are on the uh, on the injury report, but you know we're not really sure what's going on. Despite how bad their record is, they both could be easily two zero. Obviously, Sea Dragons with that fumble against D.C. on the one-yard line. And then last week, A.J. McCarron going into his bag of tricks for the victory. And then the Vipers, you know, destroying the Renegades for that first half. And then Luis Perez technically throwing five touchdown passes. And both these teams are being hurt by turnovers. Last week, the Vipers did a decent job of forcing turnovers. I think they, they caused three or four all fumbles. Uh, but that's going against Tayamu, who needs to figure out his situation regarding his passing attack right now and everything. And we can factor in this monsoon from last week as well as why things kind of weren't really working out, but we're still going to be dealing with a lot of rain. And while field conditions could be okay, it just depends on the mental game, I think. You know, I don't get psyched up going to Cashman Field. Some people are saying it's fine. Some people are saying it was terrible. That's their opinion. Until I go to the field, I'm not going to offer my opinion on it because in reality, it doesn't matter. You know, Ben Denucci has been lighting it up as we talked about. He leads the league in passing. Jacor Peterson leads the league in receiving yards. But it's definitely those turnovers and failing on those short yard conversions that we're having issues with for Seattle. Obviously, with Brendan Knox being out, like I talked about, I'd love to see – Steven Montez take over some short yardage runs and whatnot just to change it up. Not really sure as far as on their defensive side of the, uh, defensive side of the ball, but it's all going to run through Sharif Miller, Tazer Skipper, and Nico Lalas up on that up front, creating that pressure and getting Perez a little bit jittered because he can't throw the out route. Let's be honest; he's got limited arm, arm strength. He's he's kind of the all football version of Alex Smith. I've used that competitive uh, that co- uh, comparison multiple times, but I do think that Seattle has the advantage against DC uh, against Vegas. Now Vegas has been moving the ball. They've done some good things. They did it really well against against the Renegades in Week One, and I think that Hundley could take this team team. Uh, to the next level because even despite not knowing the playbook and some limited opportunities, he did move the ball way better than Perez. And I hate saying that. Um, I, I, I mean, this, there's no excuse for going one of five. We can call Luis Perez, you know, a lot of things, but the man has played a lot of football since 2019. He's been involved in the league. So he's been in the AAF, the XFL in 2020, the spring league, 20. 21, the USFL in 2022, and now obviously playing here. He's got time with NFL camps. So the man has experience. I know we love his story, you know, not much coming into college, all that stuff. But at this point, the guy's got experience. He's thrown for almost 4,000 passing yards in alt football. He's thrown almost 30 touchdowns. It's, it's, it's make or break for this guy. I do think he's NFL window is kind of closed, Luis Perez, that is. But you have these tools and weapons around him 
like Rod Smith, Martavis Bryant, Matt Sexton, Jeff Bidette, Geronimo Allison, that there's no excuse for him to throw for zero yards on five attempts. So this is this is this might be fighting for his starting all football career. Now if both the USFL and the XFL fold and the XSFL comes up or whatever the next thing is, the XS the XSAA FL comes up, definitely I definitely see Perez in that league as well as a backup, and obviously he'll probably weasel his way into some starts. But this is such a big game for him. I hope he doesn't over he doesn't press too hard because I think we're seeing that a lot in these quarterbacks right now. But Hunley's right on his heels, and if he doesn't play, then it should be the Hunley show for the rest of the season. Maybe we see McClendon at some point if things get real bad. I do think that Seattle does come away with this despite some blunders with the clock management and some turnover issues because I do think they're going to force more turnovers because I don't think Hunley in the Perez operation is going to be a smooth transition until one of these guys gets all the reps in week in the week prior going in. So if Perez comes in, knocks it out, I I think they could win. And that's not a knock on Hunley, but that's a continuity thing. But if they keep going back and forth, I definitely see the Sea Dragons winning this. I don't know, with these awkward scores that we always see, let's go 25 to 22 Sea Dragons. But thanks, guys, for tuning in. That was my quick little preview of the game. A uh, big shout-out to Matt Lyons at XFL News Hub. Definitely – you know, read his article before and Maddie Fresh um, on YouTube. Check out their work. I'll link some in the thing uh, in the description below. Any questions for me, guys? Appreciate you know all the love and support. You know, just crossed over 525 subscribers, so we're treading up. And then, yeah, that's really it. Week week three of the XFL coming in. I think Sea Dragons over Vipers. Sea Dragons over Vipers. One of these teams goes to one and two. I'm excited. Thanks, guys.